to you and we welcome you to the spectacular Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada for the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Bob Arams, Top Rake Incorporated and Showtime Event Television in association with the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino and the undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the World Boxing Association, President Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor Dr. Calvin Inelsing, along with the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the Chairman is Dr. Elias Garnum, Commissioners Glenn Carano, Lorenzo Fertitta, Dr. Luther Mack, and Dr. James Ney, the Executive Director, Mark Ratner, our physicians at ringside, Dr. Flip Omansky, Dr. Margaret Goodman, Dr. William Berliner, and Dr. James Game, Time keepers at the bell also keeping count of the knockdowns. We have Al Bicek and Jane Broadfoot. Introducing to you our judges, scoring this bout from ringside from Las Vegas, Nevada, Dwayne Ford. From Montreal, Canada, Guy Jutras. And from Valencia, Venezuela, Fernando Viso. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA Bantamweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino, it's showtime! Introducing to you our referee in charge of this bout, working in this is 116th world title bout, Joe Cortez. Introducing to you, ladies and gentlemen, the challenger on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with purple trim, fighting out of and representing Fort Worth, Texas. He weighed in with a bantamweight limit of 118 pounds with a fine record of 27 wins, one loss. He has 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, he is making his second attempt at a world title. Here is the former NABF champion, currently ranked the number two bantamweight contender in the world by the WBA. Please welcome the challenger, introducing Pauli Ayala. And his opponent across the ring, the defending three-time world champion on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with gold trim, proudly representing his hometown of Albuquerque, New Mexico. He weighed in the same as his opponent, 118 pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with 46 wins, no losses, two draws with 25 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the former IBF and WBO Junior Bantamweight World Champion and the current WBA Bantamweight Champion of the World known as Mi Vida Loca, introducing the undefeated Johnny Tapia. Once again, a referee in charge of this bout, Joe Cortez. All right, gentlemen, this rule, this fight is for the WBA Championship of the World. I'm here to enforce the rule. I don't want a good, clean fight. I don't want any rough tactics, any dirty fighting, because I'm not going to take anything from you guys as far as rough, rough tactics concerned. If I got this ball to fight either one of you, I'll do it, you understand? I want a good, clean fight. Keep the punches up. Give me a clean fight. Check him up. Johnny Tapia setting the tone early. Things got started quickly, even before the instructions. Unbelievable. Check this out while bringing out to Jimmy Lennon Jr. was introducing the fighters. Tapia comes over and watch what he does to Ayala. He shoves him away and then a skirmish breaks out. This is before the bell. I can't wait now to get this thing started. Here we go. This is the real thing. I guess it's safe to say there's some bad blood here, Steve. 
Pretty accurate statement. Round one scheduled for 12 for the WBA Bantamweight Championship. They're both wearing black trunks. Johnny Tapulani, your screen, Pony Ayala on the left. Tapia opens it up with a left hook, but it was blocked by Ayala. Tapia, historically a fast starter, respectful of Ayala prior to the fight. He's just very confident in his ability to be better. He says Ayala's game, and he's got a good chin. Ayala admits it's the toughest fight of his life. He looks for a fast start, too, but it probably won't go the distance. I'll tell you what, too, Ayala, he said that with Ayala, he was talking about him, just that and the other thing, but... Johnny said, I don't want to knock him out. I really want to punish him. Yes, he did. He's 5-0 nice against Southpaw's Tapia. I think his speed's going to be a big factor here. Right now, they're both unloading mercilessly big punches. There's nothing, there's nothing easy going on in this fight. There's no feeling out here. They're going right to it. Ayala said the key for him, go to the body. That's my style anyway. He says his Southpaw style will make Tapia have to change. Although Tapia said he may have to switch. Tapia knows how to fight left handers. No problem there. Either way, while the overall feeling is while Ayala's a very good fighter, aggressive, busy, throws a lot of punches, he may be a bit too slow for Tapia. And he's not a big puncher. Only 12 knockouts in his 27 wins. We'll see how it all unfolds. He's landed a couple of nice right hooks to Tapia's body, but also Tapia has thrown that right hand right down the middle and scored with it many times already. Tapia nearly slipped again on the same pad that all the other fighters have had. Why don't they put that thing back? Everybody in every fight has slipped on that pad. Tapia, constant movement, going to the body. Hardly ever a dull fight with this guy, so aggressive. Attacks the game with such confidence and emotion, but he's smart, too. He fights under control, although it doesn't always seem that way. Well, he fights with such emotion, it looks like he's not in control, but he is. He knows what he's doing. That's how he's, he beat Danny Romero and neutralized his power. He was under control. See, he's so quick he can get in, land the shot, and step back out and make Ayala miss. He's done it five or six times already. It's going to be key to that speed, offensively and defensively. He's out thinking him and out speeding him right this round. I mean, you see those two little punches right there? Too fast, too much thought. Bing, bing. Out. It's gone. Tapia loves to brawl. Everything with him is a war. He feels more at home in the ring than he does outside the ring. Has a puncher's mentality, but does not have a big punch. Only 25 of his 46 wins by KO. Well, round one and then some over. Deep breath. Okay, that's way box out there, okay? Now you gotta stay off the ropes for me, son, okay? All right? You feel the ropes coming off, I want you getting off them, okay? All right. Now here, remember, control that fight. Control, control that on the outside, all right? You wanna get the leg on the outside side, okay? And go with that right hand. The lead right hand's gonna be there for you. And also... Okay? You're blocking everything, You gotta, and the crowd's gonna holler. Don't worry about that. The crowd don't mean nothing, okay? How do you feel? Great. Okay, Just well, don't now, stop on one. No one shot. There's got to be more than one hand, okay? You remember when he's going to your left, you got to throw the lead left and come back to the body. Okay. If he goes the other way, you got to come to the oh. body. Concentrate on that body. We're going to have to slow him down. If you, right, can't, touch go, it, if you can't catch him, I'm going to throw a straight shot. Yeah, well, he's drunk. He's a little high, yeah. We enter in a round two. Tapia comes rushing out to meet Ayala in the center of the ring. Tapia's got a great corner man in Freddie Roach, who was a, one of the bravest fighters I ever saw fighting as a kid, and now has turned into a great trainer and a great corner man. Roach was a savage fighter in his day. He, he looked like a little church boy, and then he got in there and fought like a savage, like Sean. I'll tell you guys right now, come here. I'll tell you guys right now. Well, I'll tell you what, listen. I'm not going to tolerate too much of this, you understand? Let's go. Joe Cortez really trying to take control before this thing gets too out of hand. Joe Cortez is an excellent referee. He will take charge. Uh, he's been in there with some wilds, too. I mean, you got to start at the beginning or else, you know, it gets tough. Again, Tapia slipped on that uh, Mandalay Bay foam rubber padding. I don't think it helps 
of those photographers keep pushing it up. Right now, Ayala's showing some pretty good strength, moving Tappy around, forcing Johnny to move a little more maybe than he wants. And Ayala's corner said you've got to slow him down. You can't let him keep moving that freely. Ayala pushing Tapia back, and Tapia marching forward with a barrage of his own. Look at the concentration on Tapia's face. But he gets nailed with a big right hand. Ayala scoring well with Tapia coming back. Look at that savage punch. The infighting raging on here, and then the grabbing. Tapia grabbing Ayala into the ropes. Body shots by Ayala, and then to the head. Good sequence here for Ayala. Excellent five or six punches. Ayala kept his word. He's going to go to that body. Well-schooled, disciplined fighter, number two contender, Paulie Ayala. Right in there with the champion. Well, neither man giving an inch. Both guys going at it as hard as they can. This is a great little fight right now. It's steaming up. Under a minute remaining in round two. Oh, beautiful double hand. Digging double left hooks. And and instead of an under and over, he did an over and then an under. Johnny Deacon. A straight left hand answer by Ayala. That sent Tapia back. There's a quick right. A beautiful jab by Ayala. And the crowd is roaring. And now Tapia with a combination to the face of Ayala. Tremendous exchanges here in round two. Ayala continues to land repeatedly with hooks, rights and lefts. But Tapia fights back. On the inside, Ayala appears to be a little stronger than Tapia. Tapia just got nailed with a left hook. Thank you very much, Steve. I'm here with Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar, you have a very big fight coming up on September the 18th on HBO against Felix Trinidad. It's really the fight that everybody's been waiting for. How do you feel you'll stack up against Felix? I feel great. I feel uh, I'll be in the best shape of my life. Everybody has been waiting for this fight for the longest time, and it's finally going to happen. September 18th, the fight of the millennium. And the fight will be taking place here in Las Vegas. Uh, let me ask you, do you feel as though you've gained a tremendous amount of credibility with fight fans and within the industry with your defeat of Ike Corte? Well, I believe uh, having to fight every single fighter they face, they put in front of me. Um, if it's Chavez, if it's Whitaker, if it's he, Corte. He clearly was your best fighter and the best fight probably you've definitely, had, correct? Definitely. Uh, Ike Corte uh, was young, strong, undefeated world champion. So uh, beating Ike Corte gave me that extra respect I needed to move on to the next level, to face on Trinidad and then also capture another level of, uh, of respect. Oscar, we wish you luck. Thank you. September 18th. All right, back over to you, Steve. All right, uh, Jim, round three. Round two was a solid one for Paulie Ayala. Tapia has thrown a lot of punches thus far, many of them picked off by the gloves of Paulie Ayala. Boy, that was about as good as you can see, two even guys going at it. I mean, and neither one gave an inch. It just went at it. God, that was good. Action-packed round. Tapia resorting to boxing smart now. Walks into a nice right hook. He's getting caught by those hooks. There's another one. Tapia comes back, but more punches being offered up by the challenger. Paulie Ayala picks up where he left off. Boy, those were hard shots to the body. Tapia's getting drawn to a little bit of a slug, but might not be to his advantage. No, he's getting hit in the head really hard. I mean, I don't know what kind of a chin can take that. Upset-minded Paulie Ayala continues to look impressive. Boy, he's impressive. His, his punches to the body are so hard. Thudding shots to the ribs by Paulie Ayala, the southpaw. Oh, Tapia stumbled and almost went down. He was pulled to the ground. It was not really a knockdown or a bounce and a pull. He's only been down once in his career. His second pro fight versus a fighter named James Dean. Minute and a half remaining in round three. Let me tell you, this progresses like this. The prospects are good that he will visit the campus sometime during the evening. Because this guy's laying a pump. There's another right hook by Ayala. And those are landing effectively, repeatedly. Tapia smiles back. 
I think Johnny Tapia is trying to make a point. He's not doing it well by standing and slugging with Ayala. It doesn't behoove him. He's got the speed. He's got the boxing style. Move, counter punch. That's what he should be doing. Boy, Ayala knows what he's doing inside. Those inside punches to the body are so devastatingly hard. See that? See that? Boy, he goes right to the body. This guy is tough. Ayala's tough. Ayala not intimidated at all by the so-called mystique of Johnny Tapia. The fact that Tapia is undefeated. He's a three-time world champion, has the crowd behind him, but Ayala just continues to press forward. Straight left hand right on the button, right on the nose by Ayala. And Tapia says, you didn't hurt me, he shakes it off. But you gotta wonder. We talked about it a lot. Southpaw Orthodox fighter, they step on each other's feet. Tapia's been all over the front of Paul Ayala's right foot many times already in his first three rounds. Tapia also said his biggest concern, one of them, aside from the left hook of Ayala, the headbutts. Fighting a left hook. One more. Okay, Johnny. Put a lot of water on me. Give me, give me his punch. Up here. Albuquerque, I still love you. I'll be chubby. Oh. Okay, Johnny, here you go. Now listen to me. All right? You're standing in front of this guy too much getting him shots, okay? You've got to use your speed, okay. all right? Tap his defense not as good as it usually is. He gets it with a nice right hook behind the head. Ayala working very well on the inside. There's the left uppercut. Kind of a pull to the ground. He kind of a hit him behind here and pulled him. Later in the round, he gets drilled pretty cleanly. There's a nice left hand to the body. He comes up with another one-two. And Tapia gets hit clean as he's walking away. And he does as usual. He smiles. And those are points going in the kick for Paulie Ayala, who's had two very good rounds, blazing rounds. Now it's up to Tapia to start. Okay, what's Tapia usually proficient at avoiding punches, making opponents pay when they miss. But not here tonight, but never underestimate the heart of a champion. I think Rudy Tomjanovich uh, once said that after the Houston Rockets won the title. And Johnny Tapia has got the big heart. In that previous round when Tapia went down, they didn't call it a knockdown because it wasn't a clean punch. The punch landed behind his head. And Tapia, excuse me, Paul kind of pulled him down and he was off balance. So it was not a clean punch, therefore not a clean knockdown. Even though his knuckles may have scraped the canvas? That's correct. Yeah, because he was off balance. It wasn't because a punch knocked him down. It was a punch, but he was pulled down and he was off balance. That was a correct call. All right. Round four continues. About two minutes to go. Ayala refusing to be intimidated by Tapia and has scored the more effective blows thus far. Oh, yeah. Boy, Ayala is blocking that left hook to the body. Tapia's very well. Nice right hand down the middle. Well, with Tappy, as we've seen, nothing's ever easy. It's always a drama, always an adventure, but he's never lost in 48 fights. Is his number up tonight? Paulie Ayala's trying to make sure it is. Another good flurry by Ayala, midway through the fourth. Ayala cannot go backwards. If Tappy can back Ayala effectively, Ayala can't win the fight going backwards. It's not his style. It's a southpaw thing. Yeah. Crisp uppercuts with the left by Ayala, and those are getting through to the chin. What a terrific fight being fought thus far by the challenger, the number two contender, Paulie Ayala from Fort Worth, Texas. Tapia doing a lot better this round than he did the last two, where he took some kind of shellacking for two rounds. But he seems now to be getting his timing back yeah. to the counters. He's making Ayala miss more. Blocking more and then countering and scoring. See on the inside there, he's tight with his defense. He bangs a hook to Ayala's head. Ayala with thumping shots right on the belt and he goes to the chin. Under 30 seconds left in round four. And Tappy is set for right now. Yes, he has switched. As he said he might. Look out. That, that, that knee goes up awfully high. Another headbutt. The heads collide and Tappy 
He's scared of uh, being cut. He's been cut so many times. He keeps worrying about that cut up there. Tapia grimacing from the headbutt. Well, it comes on again. Tapia boxing beautifully with a left and a right combination. Saves the round. Tapia saves the round. Now here, the you right, me? you see the right hand, don't work it for you, the lead right hand, you come back at the hook, you hear me? Okay. All right, that's good combination, you turn the way that body down too. But after your combination, see, you cannot stand in front of this, okay? Spin them off to the side, you hear me? Just you. like in the gym, all right? Okay. Now let's stay. JT, okay. you need your speed, buddy. I got you. All right, I want to see those feints, head movement, and put it together now, okay? All right. I'm going to spin out a little wider. Okay, you can fight his fight a little bit, all right? You lady? A whole lot of head button going on here. There they bang head, just lean into one another. Right in there, eye to eye, head to head. A little later on, same type of thing. They just slam their heads right, bend over right into one another. Boy, what concise instructions from Freddie Roach. He's so good. He is so good. If you do what Freddie says, and you can't always do what he says, you got a good chance of winning. An appreciative crowd here at the Mandalay Bay Event Center in Las Vegas as we headed around five. Scheduled for 12, WBA Bantamweight title. And what a start for the challenger, Pony Allen, who continues to wail away at the head and body of the champion. Freddie Rhodes was correct. He cannot fire and then sit there because Ayala's going to counter. He's got to get out. Back yeah, comes Tapia, oh, though, oh, the oh, reward oh, of the crowd. Religious tattoos draped all over his back, firing that jab, but it's being picked off by Ayala. That jab again was stopped by the gloves of Tapia. So Ayala goes downstairs and upstairs with a left uppercut. Oh, oh nice the winging left hook by Johnny Tapia. It was a beautiful hook. He made a nice little feint, dipped to the side, and fired that hook right around Ayala's right hand. Tapia's fast when he wants to be fast. And so is Ayala, who continues to pick off many punches. He's got some kind of defense. And how about that offense? A left hook by Tapia to the face. He's got to give a little showboat. He just paid for it. Oh, he did. Oh, he did. That's just what happened, Bobby. He, he was going to do a little showboat, and he got clobbered. An excruciating right hook there by Paulie Ayala. But Tapia seemed unfazed by it. Excruciating to me. And they both had their, their moments back and forth, back and forth. Nobody's clearly controlled the entire round. Paul Yale is starting to close it a little stronger. Though. A flurry by uh, Tapia. Oh, a big straight right hand by Tapia. That sent Ayala reeling just a bit. But Tapia doesn't step back. He keeps coming in. He keeps coming in. And when he comes in, it's three, four, five shots at a time. Oh, holding and hitting. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Cut that out. Cut that out. Let's go. Both uh, guilty. What a seesaw round that was. Wow. How do you call that round? One word. Don't let him be talking to you doing anything, okay? When you're inside time, stay busy, okay? You gotta stay busy with both hands, okay? Do that for me. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. Okay? You've, you've abandoned your speed. Okay? You're jabbing your left hand once in a while. You gotta keep using that. Yeah. You hear me? You gotta move up this okay. side. But the, all right, use those legs, all right? You're not using your legs, okay? Oh, you got him. I got him. GT, now here, listen to me. The right hand lead and the double left hook is gonna be your shot. 
Okay. You throw that shot, you're gonna knock your son of a bitch out, okay? okay? The right hand lead, a double left hook, okay? Okay. You hit him one, hit him two, okay? Meanwhile, Tapia gets in a hello to somebody back home, which he generally does between rounds. Likes that camera time. Well, here we go, round number six. Ayala's first shot at the title ended in a controversial technical decision. He lost it. He's trying to make sure he leaves tonight with the title. This was going to be hard tonight. The great Emmanuel Stewart just came by and dropped a little note that said, Paulie is fighting the perfect fight. Tapia needs more right-hand leads. Just when he wrote that, one of the corner men said, you, got, you need one more, more right-hand leads, Johnny. Right-hand lead with a double left hook. There it is. But he, the great Emmanuel Stewart said, Paulie is fighting the perfect fight tonight. Getting very calm, cool instructions from Henry Mendez. A little more of a sense of urgency over in that Roach Tapia corner. Uh-oh. What happened? What happened? May have gotten thumb. Tapia may have gotten thumb. No, I mean, bang heads again. Yeah, he, he, he keeps worrying about where that eye is going to get cut. He's been cut before. He keeps worrying about it. So every time he gets butted, he, uh, he reaches over there to see what happened. with body shots himself. Oh, look at these shots. Oh, it's followed by a left by Tapia. And Tapia switches southpaw again to do it. Wow, what a series of shots. And still, Paulie comes on. And still, he comes on. Tapia does it so quick and suddenly, the switching. And he landed four or five beautiful shots. Boy, that should have had some effect because they were hard. And just won't let up. Let's go, come on. Tap your sapo again. Now he's back already. He switches so quick. Come on, get him out of there. Come on, get him out of there. Combination upstairs by Tappy, but blocked by Ayala. Amazing pace to this fight. Punches are being thrown in this fight. Tapia Sapo again. He just switches back and forth. That's really funny. I mean, I've, I've never seen a guy do it that fast. Ayala says he fights better against other Southpaws, so, and it doesn't seem to be bothering him. Well, one finishes a barrage, and the other one comes in with one. And then back and forth. They're not giving up any ground. No inches, no, no advantage. Now comes Tapia's turn. Seconds of round six. Now comes Tapia's turn. They each take turns. Overhand right by Tapia. Back comes by Allen. And he misses at the bell. And wins around this Tapia. Okay? So your combination is beautiful, JT. I got you here. Oh, one. Okay. Close your eyes, Johnny. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. You gotta use your legs more, a little more speed, okay? Okay. Side to side movement, okay? This guy keeps following you, okay? JT, after your flurries, get off to the side and turn them into another combination. You okay. hear me, son? Got you, baby. Let's go. Now Keep going, Trey. Okay. Now, where's the double right hand? I'm trying okay. to get him. He's All going right. down. Okay. Put that double right hand. That... Here goes the hip biting again. Tappy's moving back. Ayala coming in. Just as they come together again, bang, right there, right on his eye. He's worried about that eye. Tapia switches to southpaw. Well, now right here he's going to double left hook to the body. Neri switches to southpaw, puts a double right hook, two jabs in the left hand, and landing more pretty clean. Very impressive switch. How about uh, your scores at the half unofficial? I got a dead heat. I got three rounds to 357, 57. That's exactly what I got. 57 to 57. Man, this is a fight. This is a scorcher. Quick mention of the online score, even as well by the folks watching on television. We had a round. 
Round seven is scheduled for 12 for the WBA Bantamweight Championship. Johnny Tapia versus Paulie Ayala. It has been a stirring, compelling fight. Well, Tapia used that double triple jab from the outside. He's so much more effective. He, he, he can ward off the shots by Ayala. He counters back so much more effectively. That's where he should be, not on the inside. In the inside, he's getting killed. He's not doing well on the inside. Out here is where he's going to race. Southpaw again just for one jab. Trying to confuse Ayala. Ayala, wild miss there. Tapia too quick. And elusive. Those were not heavy punches by Ayala. That was a straight left right on the nose by Ayala. Ayala coming underneath and then over. Well, he's showing everything here. What a beautiful exhibition by the challenger. Now, you know the thing about Tapia, he, he'd be doing good from the outside. Then he gets hit, and that fighter inside of him turns him on. Johnny Tapia that just fierce threw fighter comes out, and then he goes that toe to toe. That's when he gets hit. Johnny Tapia just threw a double right hand from an orthodox stance. You know how difficult that is to do. to your left, you gotta throw that left son. Okay, okay, you're chasing him. Let's cut him off a little more. You got quick feet, stop him. You stop on one time. Come on. You gotta throw punches because you know he's a champion, okay? Okay. The words of Henry Mendez, you got quick feet, stop. You gotta throw punches into the ears of Paulie Ayala as he starts round eight. Right above us as the water comes cascading down us. What a gripping fight. There's a right hook, followed up by a combination by Ayala. Meantime, Tapia just lowers his head and bores in. Well, he's taking a lot of punishment, Tapia. But he keeps coming forward. Tapia sees something. I'm not sure what, but I see him. He is concentrating on staying inside, and he is starting to get to Paulie a little bit. But Ayala, predominantly, the stronger fighter on the inside. Ayala throwing a lot more punches right here in this sequence. Here's a left hook. And then a left hook missing by Tapia. Body shots. And then he goes upstairs, Ayala. But the second punch was blocked. When you see two fighters this equal, this good, it becomes a contest of the will. Who's got the will to win? Who will not let the other guy win? And that's what makes boxing great. This right now. Contest of the will. Will conditioning and maybe the experience will be the factors in the last two rounds. Again, Tapia complaining about the headbutt. Both, both fighters with unbelievable resolve and heart. There's a combination to the head by Tapia. See, when Tapia makes that miss and then jams him back, that's his thing. Hit, move, hit. Very quick reflexes offensively as well as defensively. 
Hits around Pauly and slowed up some. Unbelievable hand speed being displayed by both fighters. of both fighters still reigning supreme this late into the fight this deep they're both in unbelievable shape but Tapia looks stronger Ayala this round looks a little weaker like he's slowing up he's not throwing the ball well I'll tell you if that earlier fight was, a, was something that could put you to sleep this is an amphetamine oh nice uppercut by Pauly Tapia trying to get the crowd going Left jab is working. It's cooking now. It's heating up for Tapia. 
Patrick's starting to land that jab at will. Ayala stumbles, but Ayala comes back with tremendous heart. Oh, nice. What a left hook there by Tapia. And as he threw the right, he slipped, and he comes right back. It was a slip by Tapia. Yeah, he slipped and got up swinging. That's a street fighter. That's a street fighter in Tapia. He got up ready to fight. No box down. There's some tape. Sizzling round. You got it, Tony. Keep it up. That was a good round. That was a good round. And I and I need nothing. Like you watch with the fight in Southport. The feet right here, left foot and right foot. They meet and watch what happens as we roll the tape. They wind up stepping on each other all the time. And that is very, very awkward. Here's a different angle. Same thing with the feet, except Johnny Tapia stepped in some water or something and just slipped right out. It's an awkward dance. First, Carla, come on. Come on, you be first. Man. Well, you this is first. going into the That's championship causeway now. Okay. We're now 10, 11, it, and 12. Anything no, can happen. No matter where this fight goes from this point on, mark it down. June 26, 1999, one of the fights okay, of the year. Hurt, Again, this has to be a candidate for fight of the year. It has to be. Again, oh, the head. Oh, oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. On, on top of the head is a cut. Bud, top Time. of Tapia's head. Time. There's a lot of blood on Johnny Tapia's head. It's yes, he's been complaining all night long of the headbutt situation. Oh, it's Cliff Pomansky, the doctor. But that doesn't make it. This is on top of the head. They can... Get, get back in our corner. Get back in our corner. Get, get, get back in our corner. Okay, let's go. Let's Tapia go. also getting right, blood go. streaking I'm into his go. mouth, had to spit it out. Coming down from, cascading from the top of his head, from the headbutts with the South Paul Yellow. Well, he's been looking for a cut. He found it. So now oh, this is a nice combination, Steve, I'm sorry. A major sense of urgency now for Johnny Tapia. Hi, guys. Well, not particularly because that's a place where they never stop a cut. Well, tell Johnny as he unloads. Not only that, but I think Tappy should just stick to his game plan. He's winning the fight just by a hair now, I think. And if they stop it because of that, they'll go to the scorecard. So keep fighting, win the fight for your the way. Tappy is fighting as if he wants this thing to end right now, though. He's had enough. But look at these left uppercuts by Ayala to the chin. And then he goes to the body. To the net. No doubt about it. Tapia's tasting knockout, but he can't get it. He can't get it, and this kid comes back and nails him. And the round seesaws back and forth, and it's it's a very even fight, just like uh, Bobby has. I have him ahead by one. Great left by Ayala. Check out the gash on top of Tapia's head. He's trying to forget about it. Got more important things like Ayala in front of him. Nearly a low blow right to the hip there by Ayala. He's okay.
Okay, JJ. All over me, big. Johnny. Listen. Hey, let me just listen. Okay, JJ. Now listen to me. All right. I got it. I got it. Like this. All right. Now here. That was a good round. Good combinations, right? You're backing this guy up. All right. Yeah. Now you see that right hand? Here comes the bloody right clash of heads. Boy Ayala's coming in. Johnny Tapia. They just slam one to one another as they turn. No one's even looking, and I. I can't see how clean that headbutt was. Excellent right hand by Tap. He goes to the body as Boyd picks his head up. He sits right there, gets with left hook, counter, jab, right down the pipe. Beautiful right hand. Over to Jim Gray. All right, Steve, I spoke to Dr. Flip Homansky. He says his cut is a surface scratch on the top of Johnny Tapia's head. It will not prevent him from continuing. Steve, thank you. Thank you, Jim. The last time Ayala went past the 10th round was two and a half years ago. 12 round win by decision, January 11, 1997, on the De La Hoya Whitaker card. Should have had Gomez. Well, we talked to him at the meetings, too, and he said this fight will not only probably be the hardest of his life, but it's almost sure to go to full 12. Well, Ayala definitely needs these two rounds, and Tapia needs one of the two. Needs him. These are I have Tapia pulling away right now, gaining the points he needs. These are truly championship rounds. It just looks like Paul has finally started to run out of gas in the last two rounds. Did Tapia just switch again to Southport just for a brief second? He does it so quick, so often, I'm not always picking it up. He's back to conventional. Throwing the jab, falling with the right. Some of those got through, some of them were blocked. Elbows and gloves blocking it by Ayala. Beautiful defense by Taffy right there. Made him miss a whole lot of punches. Well, he looked a little bit exhausted. I mean, who would? Not only has he made a major effort, but he's been clocked every one of these. Hang on, hang on, hang on. What a fight he's put up. Conditioning, huge factor here down the stretch. Talk to the top of the show. Is a fight like this necessary to be a superstar? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And both fighters fighting like superstars. Yeah, offer this fight. Right. It'd be hard to, to pick against that boy. He's got guts. He keeps coming. As does Ayala. With a right hook by Ayala. That connected. But back comes a flurry by Tapia. He's so quick, Steve. It's hard to get out of the way of his punches. When you put your hands up to block, there's just another set of five or six on the way. Well, this is a fan's fight. Break, break out, break out, break out, break out. Non-stop activity from the opening bell, and that is not an exaggeration. It's so hard to hit, he really is. Benny misses by Ayala, it looked good, but nothing connected. That was vintage, vintage Johnny Tapia. Now, now he's playing a little bit. Outstanding defense by Tapia. He has not been playing, but he has started to play a little bit. Tapia nearly walked into a straight right hand, and Ayala finishes with a left. something they do it and then they're answered by their counterpart right here Ayala on the inside with Tapia Tapia likes the hook but he walks into a hook he comes back with a six punch combination Ayala makes an attempt to do the same thing Johnny has to get out of the way this is real give and take ebb and flow now, okay take control and get him no okay make sure you get the water in the corner right deep breath that's it one more Johnny, this is your life. All right? Let's go to work, okay? All right? Listen to this roar from the crowd saluting both fighters. Neither fighter a knockout specialist as they touch gloves, so this final round will be critical, crucial, perhaps to determine the outcome. I have Tapia up by a couple of points right now, so he can't lose 
scorecard without some and serious knockdowns. Wouldn't be surprised if some folks have Ayala ahead. Well, I have him. I, I have the top of your head 106 to 103, three punches, so even a, a knockdown wouldn't help him that much, unless it's a 10 7. We approach the final two minutes of a dramatic slugfest here in Las Vegas. And you were the first to call it. I agree with you. This has got to be a candidate for fight of the year. Candidate. Definitely going to be right up there. Happy again trying to get the crowd going. And you folks at home, don't, don't forget, we're just, just guessing, Bobby and I. We, we don't know until you hear the judges, and we've been surprised. We approach the midway point. Ayala's having a pretty good round, actually. Tapia's backed off a little Ayala, looking like he's letting it all hang loose in the quest for that title. Well, Ayala, trying his best, obviously, has some of the steam knocked out of him at this point. Tapia looking to finish strong. The crowd chanting, Johnny, Johnny. Another part of the crowd chanting, Paulie, Paulie. Continue to await 
the dramatic decision. One of the best fights of the year. We're ready for the decision from Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, before I read the score totals, we've all seen a tremendous 12 rounds of action. No matter who the winner is, they both deserve a round of applause. Kali Ayala and Johnny Tapia, great fights. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we do have a unanimous decision as the judges agree. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Guy Jutra scores about 115 to 114. Judges Dwayne Ford and Fernando Viso both scored about 116 to 113. All three in favor of the winner. And the new WBA Bantamweight Champion of the World, Holly Ayala. Johnny Tapia now coming over to pick up Pauly as he takes a trip around the ring here. When Johnny puts him down, we'll get in here with both these fighters. Pauly, your assessment of this fight, you went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Did you expect that he would stand in there like that and fight you this way? I told you I don't care. I just wanted to fight my fight. But that's why I don't believe the critics. I just go by faith, not by sight. I'm a living example, living example. What, 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 what was your strategy? Nobody has beaten Johnny Tapia in 46 fights. You obviously have something no one you, else has. I told you I never fought him. I, you can't see the tapes and go by the tapes and predict he's going to fight like that. But see, he, he found me catching him. He gets emotional, so he wanted to get back in the game and fight my fight. Did he, try to, did he try to intimidate you right there at the beginning of the fight when it seemed right after the introductions that he pushed you and punched you? Yeah, you know, hey, I told him, I said, I, don't, I mean, I told everyone, I don't fight until the bell rings. Outside of the fight, outside the fight, we're friends. We're brothers in the Lord. Polly, here it is right here, Polly. Tell us what was going through your mind right there. I thought he was just going to come up there and tag. I said, hey, he wants to fight right now. I said, hey, we can fight before the bell. But what? no, you know what? I love Johnny. Great fighter, great champion. Like I said, he was the best junior bantamweight in the world, possibly legendary. But I'm the best bantamweight in the world. And he had never faced an opponent like me. Never. You were had some, name. You had some awful good infighting. And it seemed as though you never had to take a step back as we look at the monitor. Tell us about it. Well, you know, uh, I was fighting my fight. I was ready for him to either. I did a little boxing. I did a little slugging. More slugging than boxing. But I told you I'm an aggressive boxer. I can counter. Uh, they underestimate me. My punching power keeps them, keeps them humble. And it keeps them at bay. Do you think the three pounds was a big difference for you? What do you think? I mean, I told you it was. I told you if I, if I made 115, I'd have to cut off my head. Hey, Fort Worth, Dallas Stars, Spurs, and Polly and Yala, baby! Hey, Polly, final question here, and we're going to bring Johnny Tapia in here. Johnny, come on in. Would you like to fight him again? Hey, if, if, if the money's right, it's about business. I love hey. this man. Thanks for the opportunity, brother. Johnny, let me ask you here. First, let's start. Did you, why did you stand toe-to-toe? -to -toe? You had been so successful boxing. Romero, Canadu, some of the others by moving around. Why did you stand toe to toe? Oh, I just felt stronger than him. Uh, I was hurting him a lot and he kept on coming. First of all, I'd like to give a lot of thanks and praise to Jesus. Nobody got hurt and made the best man won. The best man you felt won? Yeah. You agree with the decision? The well, you know what happened. Everybody knows what happened. Uh, it was my last fight. With, so now let's move on to bigger and better things. What do you mean it was your last fight in this weight class or your last fight period? What are you, what are you saying? It was my last fight with top rank. And, uh, the better man won, so now I got to go to drawing table for bigger and better things. You're, you're, you're bringing up some suspicions. If you want to elaborate it, I'll give you the opportunity. If not, are you saying that you did not lose this fight fair and square? Everybody knows what happened. What do you think? Well, I think you lost the fight, but okay. I'm asking you. If you thought I lost the fight, I lost the fight. I'm not a poor loser. I give all the total respect to Mr. Ayala. He was in great shape. I was in great shape, and the better man won. Would you like to fight him again? I'd like to fight anybody. I'd come back. Uh, a rematch, get fight of the year. 
Hey, bigger and better things on the table. I still love you, Grandma and Grandpa, and Albuquerque, I'm still your champion. Does it just become a point when somebody goes 46 and 0, where time's up, you're 32 years of age, you're moving up in weight class. Let me ask you about the weight class first before we get to that question. Did the three pounds bother you? No, not at all. I'm only getting stronger. Uh, 46 and 0, I had a good record. I got one loss on my record. Now it's time to come back and uh, wish for I'm not a poor loser. The better man won this one. Well, you've one. never lost before, so this is the first time we've seen it, and it sounds like by raising suspicions about top rank that, that, that no, you are, no, or you no, are no casting suspicions. doubts. No, no suspicions. Uh, I lost. I give my head up and my hands up to Mr. Ayala. He took my belt. Now I got to go and train harder for bigger and better things. So what do you look forward to next now? Oh, uh, my contract's up with uh, top rank, so now we got to go back to the table and get something else. All right, Johnny. Thank you for your time tonight. Appreciate hey, it. Thank you, guys, and uh, keep me in prayer. God All bless right. you. Back over to you, Steve. Okay, thank you very much, Jim. Uh, let's check the online scoring results from this wild one, Tapia versus Ayala. The folks online had it all even after uh, 12 rounds, six and six. And the judges here had it in favor of Pauli Ayala. In fact, basically, they, they had Ayala winning all three of the last rounds. Again, the final tally, 116-113. That was by Fernando Viso, 116 to 113 by Dwayne Ford, and 115, 114. That close by uh, Guy Jutras. This one will go down to the books as one of the one of the top fights. It's a blazing fight, the kind of fight.